Joymodi or Joomodi, released on March 10, 1935, was the first Assamese film made. Based on Lakshman at Besbrew's play about the 17th century Ahom Princess Sodi Joymodi, the film was produced and directed by the noted Assamese poet. Author, and filmmaker Jyoti Prasad Agarwala, and starred Ideu Hangik and acclaimed stage actor and playwright Funny Sarma. The film, shot between 1933 and 1935, was released by Chitraleka Movitone in 1935 and marked the beginning of Assamese cinema. Joymodi was screened at the 50th International Conference of the Society for Cinema and Media Studies of Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, United States in March 2011. Other screenings include, although never a commercial success, Joymodi was noted for its political views and the use of a female protagonist, something almost unheard of in Indian cinema of the time. The film was the first Indian talkie to have used dubbing and re-recording technology, and the first to engage with realism and politics in Indian cinema. The original print containing entire length of the film was thought to be lost after India's division in 1947. However, in 1995, Documentary film director Arnab Jan Dekka managed to recover entire footage of the lost film at a studio in Bombay in intact condition and reported back the matter to Assam government apart from writing about this recovery in Assamese daily Dainik Assam and English daily The Assam Express. Meanwhile, some reels of another remaining print of the film maintained by Raid Ayananda Agarwala has been restored in part by Altaf Mazid. Set in 17th century Assam, the film recounts the sacrifice of Joy Modi, an Ahom princess tortured and killed by the Ahom king Borfakan for refusing to betray her husband Gadapani by disclosing his whereabouts. The event is interpreted in contemporary patriotic terms, and calls for a greater harmony between the people of the hills and those of the plains. The hills are represented by the leader Dalimi, a Naga tribeswoman who shelters the fugitive prince Gadapani. Screenshot from Joymodi on his way back from England, Jyoti Prasad Agarwala spent about six months at the Ufa studios in Berlin, learning filmmaking. Once back in Assam, he decided to make his first film. He established Chitraban Studios at the Bolaguri T estate. Two camps were established, one near the manager's bungalow for the female artists, and the other near the tea factory for the male artists. Tea was manufactured by day, and by night actors performed at their rehearsals. Members of the cast were encouraged to keep up their physical exercises to stay fit. A special property room was constructed, in which Jyoti Prasad Agarwala collected traditional costumes, ornaments, props, hats, etc. This grew into a museum. Technicians were brought in from Lahore, ICE, transported from Calcutta. The film was taken to Lahore for editing, at which stage Agarwala discovered there was no sound for one half of the film. Unable to marshal the actors once again from their native places due to various constraints, he hired a sound studio and dubbed the voices of all male and female characters. On a single day, he recorded 6,000 feet of film. This unplanned accomplishment made Jayoti Prasad Agarwala the first Indian filmmaker to have introduced dubbing and re recording technology in talkies. Joy Modi was the wife of the Ahom Prince Gadapani. During the purge of the princes from 1679 to 1681 under King Solikva, instigated by Laluk Sola Borfakan, Gadapani took flight. Over the next few years, he sought shelter at Satras and the adjoining hills outside the Ahom Kingdom. Failing to trace Prince Gadapani, Sulukva's soldiers brought his wife Joymodi to Jaranga Pathar where, despite brutal and inhuman torture, the princess refused to reveal the whereabouts of her husband. After continuous physical torture over 14 days, Joymodi breathed her last on 13 choit of 1601 Saka, or 27th of March, AD 1680. Joymodi's self-sacrifice would bear fruit in time, La Luke was murdered in November 1680 by a disgruntled body of household retainers. The ministers, now roused to a sense of patriotism, sent out search parties for Gadapani who, gathering his strength, returned from his exile in the Garo Hills to oust Sulukva from the throne. Joymodi had known that her husband alone was capable of ending Sulukva Laluk's reign of terror. For her love and her supreme sacrifice for husband and country, folk accounts refer to her as a Sodi. The film was released on March 10, 1935, at the Ranak Theatre, and was inaugurated by the Assamese writer Lakshmanath Bezbarua. In Guwahati, it was screened at the Kumar Bhaskar Natya Mandir, the only cinema in Assam which then had sound. The film was not well received, consequently suffering a debilitating financial loss. It was able to collect only 24,000 Indian rupees from its screenings, less than half its budget of 50,000 Indian rupees, which today amounts to 7,500,000 Indian rupees. Joy Modi, 
a study of the culture and history of SM, carried with it the bright possibility of a film tradition. The significant similarities with the Russian montage reflect an element of influence. The film is noted for its constantly changing angles, unique sets, and other stylistics tactics employed by the imaginative Jyoti Prasad in this his film debut. By then a published poet and writer, his lyricism is clearly evident in this pioneering film. The film was shot on a 4,267. 20 meters length film. Joymati during production according to Natasha Yafani Sarma, who played a key role in the film, Chitraban was not merely a studio, but a film training institute in itself. Apart from the acting, T. Prasad also taught his actors certain filmmaking techniques, such as developing, processing, printing, and editing, and shared with them his knowledge of various film shots like mixed shot. Fade out, zoom, dissolve, back projection, and model shooting. The 17th century costumes used in the film were designed by Jyoti Prasad. The first ever Assamese film studio at the Bolaguri T estate although shooting at the Chitraban studio started in April 1933, it faced an initial delay as Jyoti Prasad was unable to find a suitable young woman to play Joy Modi, as well as actors for a few other roles. This was inspired by Jyoti Prasad's desire to liberate cinema from that uncertain reputation. After a prolonged search and detailed interviews, he discovered Ideyu Hangik in a remote village near Golagat. For the role of Joy Modi, she was to become the first actress of Assamese cinema. He then brought together the other chosen actors, of whom some had never seen a film, to acquaint them with his characters. During filming, the rainy season was to prove a challenge to developments in the technical process, with Jyoti Prasad having to suspend shooting for several days at a time, due to insufficient light in the absence of outdoor electricity. Shooting was carried out under sunlight by using reflectors. Filming was eventually completed in August 1934, and Joy Modi released in early 1935 after Jyoti Prasad had completed his own editing. A screenshot of Joy Modi following the Second World War Joy Modi was lost and almost forgotten. In the early 1970s, Jyoti Prasad's youngest brother, Rai Dayananda Agarwala, found seven reels of the loan print of Joy Modi while cleaning junk out of his garage. Jyoti Prasad's venture, with its considerable losses, had cost the family plantation dearly, placing his family in acute difficulties. The condition of the reels, by the early 1970s, was abysmal but his brother Rai Dayananda commissioned the well-known Assamese director Bupin Hazarika to direct the long 1976 documentary Rupkanar Jyoti Prasad Aru Joymodi, in which the reels were incorporated. The documentary thereby saved the reels, which had been copied and remastered since. Then, in 1995, popular Assamese story writer, novelist, engineer, actor, screenwriter and documentary film director Arnab Jandeka, recovered the original intact print of the film, containing the entire footage, at a studio in Bombay. This original print of Joy Modi was thought to be lost after India's division in 1947, as it was left behind in a studio in Lahore, now in Pakistan. Somehow the print, together with other films, travelled from Lahore and resurfaced in India's film capital. After making this great recovery, Arnab Jandeka reported the matter to the SM government, and wrote about this recovery in the Assamese daily Dainik Assam and the English daily The SM Express. Other leading English and Hindi newspapers, like the Northeast Times, the News Star, and Provincial Prahari, published extensive reports about Arnab Jandeka's phenomenal discovery. This film's director Jayuri Prasad Agarwala's younger brother, Rai Dayananda Agarwala, and the famous Assamese actor-playwright, Satya Prasad Barua, also confirmed and publicly acknowledged Arnab Jandeka's great recovery through two separate articles in the Danik Awesome and the highly circulated English daily The Assam Tribune in 1996. This matter was also debated at Assam Legislative Assembly, and Secretary, Cultural Affairs Department of Assam Government, convened an official meet to discuss this matter together with other issues pertaining to development of Assamese films. In 2011 Arnab Jandeka again wrote in detail about this entire episode in the prestigious Assamese literary journal Prantik. Situated about 10 kilometers west of Gopur, Jyoti Prasad's temporary film studio Chitraban, at Bolaguri T Estate, today stands deserted, a nostalgic nod to its glorious past. Once owned by Jyoti Prasad, the tea plantation passed on to the Assam Tea Corporation in 1978. The garden, where Jyoti Prasad single-handedly laid the foundation stone of Assamese cinema, now lies abandoned. The bungalow, where he composed the music for Joymodi on his organ, still stands, albeit in a dilapidated condition. Thanks for watching.